here we are in the old divide again, me, <laughs> haunted me for years. The Francophone, the Francophone arts, the vitality in Quebec, and wonderful arts in English Canada. But they seem to be different horses. They seem to have different temperaments. It's not for nothing that I think two or three Quebec films were up for best foreign film at the Oscars in the last 10 years. Only one Canadian documentary, I think, was. Yeah. Yeah. So you, at the National Arts Centre, you have a foot in both worlds. How do you read that dynamic? And I guess my wish question is, the answer to come from you is, how can we get some of the vitality from the Quebec scene into the English Canadian scene? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a dilemma for this organization like, like the rest of Canada. I, we've just spent, here we are in early December of 2014, and we've just spent six weeks through this fall debating internally whether in fact we are playing as effectively a national role in French as we are in English. And the conclusion that we have reached is that, you know, we play, we play a pretty good national role in English, but we don't play anywhere near that a national role in French. And for the next decade, uh, one of the things we have to address is to, is to play that role, not only for the institution, but so that you get that ripple effect, uh, so that, uh, so that. The vitality of, uh, of, of the arts in Quebec plays out in the rest of the country in English-speaking Canada and, and vice versa. Uh, we do it, you know, there, there are moments here, but there aren't enough moments. Uh, when, we, when we do the Governor General's Award, it is, it is, a, stunning, uh, it is a stunning moment as, uh, as the artists of Quebec are introduced to the audiences of English-speaking Canada, and uh, and the artists of English-speaking Canada uh, are introduced to the audiences of Quebec, and and it's like, woo, uh, you know, who is Gordon Lightfoot, uh, uh, and uh, you know, and and who is that remarkable comedian from Montreal that uh, that I and Calgary have never heard of, and and so. That the Governor General's Awards is one of those moments where, uh, where the duality of Canada is uh, is reduced to a kind of to, to a kind of common shorthand, and uh, and it's quite exciting. And and there are moments when uh, 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 when we've had artists uh, who were there that weekend at the Governor General's Awards. Uh, who fall in love with one another across the linguistic and cultural divide, and uh, and it's it's you know you think wow this is just this is so wonderful. Uh, we have we have a place where Robert Lepage can come and and do a play for ten days, six times in in English and four times in French. No no other place in Canada where that can happen. Uh, but, but for me, the, the regret is that uh, it's the exception rather than the rule. And, uh, and so we are, as an organization, going to, as I say, commit the next 10 years to, to uh, having the same kind of emphasis on our national role in French that we do in English. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how the organization takes. But, but the soul searching here over the last six weeks has been pretty intense. And, uh, it's been led by a man called Robert Gagné, who has, uh, who has done a wonderful job of reminding everybody here uh, mm -hmm. of, of our obligations. I guess I live in the perpetual hope that I can wake up in the, the dream of actually the, the Anglo-Franco marriage actually having wonderful children artistically. But I watch separate beds, separate bedrooms well, for I, decade I, after I, decade. Well, I, I, remember, I remember the Saturday morning about five years ago when, in December when, when I woke up and the Globe and Mail was doing, was doing their, the arts, uh, the, the the arts newsmakers of the year. And the number one arts newsmaker of the year that year was Wajdi Muawad. And people all across Canada said, who the hell is that? 
uh, and how do you pronounce his name? How do you pronounce his name? Uh, and uh, <laughs> and and uh, you know is that it, it? We're still some distance from achieving that goal, and and not helped by the media, uh, as you and I said before we started this. Uh, I would like the Globe and Mail to spend as much time on its on its arts pages covering Quebec as it does covering Quebec in its sports pages and its business pages. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and they don't do that. And, uh, and if they did, they would get a sense of incredibly vibrant uh, cultural community, uh, a, a wonderful self-contained machine that creates stars and, and creates excitement and, uh, and creates audiences. Uh, you know, and we could all, everyone in English-speaking Canada could learn a lot of lessons from how it's done in, uh, how it's done in Quebec. But the nightmare of the ache in me is that the English-Canadian psyche, passion, sinew, brain, appetite, n never hungry for the worlds that Majdi Muad presents. We did Forests in Toronto. I think it's a huge, amazing play, difficult, layered but they don't feel an appetite in the English-Canadian psyche to explore the world in that depth or that complexity or that indirectness or that associativeness. And this worries me. Uh, yeah, look, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a different emphasis, there's no question. But, but I, but it's I a think different set of reflexes for looking at life, I think. Yeah, and I, and I think that, I think Wajdi is a perfect example. I, I think Wajdi's sense of dislocation, uh, which has so so kind of uh, so kind of energized his work, you know, his sense of not quite knowing where he is or who he is, you know, is he Lebanese, is he Parisian, is he is he Canadian? What, uh, you know, what's his family? Uh, it's those are very powerful themes, and uh, and you would hope that that those themes would be. Would be embraced by by people in English-speaking Canada, but but we tend to we tend to be more literal about these these things in English-speaking Canada.